So this video will just uh, quickly go through the uh, calculation from the Bohr model of the atom, of the hydrogen atom, uh, showing the wavelength of the photon that would be emitted if an electron were to make that quantum leap from uh, that third ring down to the second ring. So from the third energy steady state to the second energy steady state. So um, I'm going to just show you how I would do those calculations using a spreadsheet because I think it makes it a little bit easier to make sure you don't mess up some of those um, <clears throat> scientific notation, the really big numbers, the really small numbers, and all that kind of stuff. So just kind of a reminder here uh, from class, we use the uh, energy conservation that the change in energy has to be equal to the energy of the photon that is emitted. So we're using Planck's equation. E equals h nu for the photon, and uh, we're going to replace that nu frequency with c divided by lambda, so we can write this in terms of wavelength. And we just solve that equation for lambda, and it equals this. And so where do we get delta e here? We, so we know h is Planck's constant, c is the speed of light. We get delta e from our Bohr model, and so we derived this equation um, in our workbook and during class. And so there's this big collection of constants out front. And in class, we had written that down as minus one half m. Um, m is the mass of the electron in the hydrogen atom. So that's a physical constant, a property of the electron. We can look that up. Uh, Z would be the charge on the nucleus or the number of protons in the nucleus. And that's, if this is a hydrogen atom, we just have one. So I'm going to replace that with one. E is the charge, the fundamental unit of charge on a proton. Um, epsilon naught here is the permittivity of the vacuum, and h-bar is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. And so all this stuff, all these constants, um, I'm just going to call that the prefactor. It turns out that this collection of constants actually has a name, and it was determined even before uh, Niels Bohr. It's called the Rydberg constant. Um, I'll just go ahead and type that out here so we know what it's called. So Rydberg is this guy's name, and um, it came about by just sort of mathematically fitting the wavelength data from the hydrogen atom spectra, emission spectra, to uh, an equation, a mathematical formula. And this was the constant that was part of that fitting parameter. Um, and so this constant was known at the time of Bohr, but Bohr was able to come up with a way of calculating that constant from all of these other fundamental constants based on a theoretical model of the atom, which is way cool, right? So he uh, nailed the Rydberg constant, so it agreed with the experimental value to within experimental error at the time. Okay, so um, we're going from um, energy level three to energy level two, so the Delta E, the difference in energies, is going to be the final state, the second level, minus the energy of the initial state, that third level. And so the same prefactor, we pull that out. 1 over 2 squared, that's the N right there, N squared. 1 over 3 squared, so the 3 comes from energy level 3, the N equal 3 um, orbit of the uh, Bohr model. All right, so now we just need to go through and enter in our constants. So you can go look these up in the front inside cover of your textbook or other sources like the NIST website. In fact, the NIST website has the updated values of the constant, but I'm going to use the ones from our textbook. So these are slightly different than the ones that are at the uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology. So NIST, N-I-S-T, you can go and look up those units. Um, if you're in my class, then there's a link at the... Um, at the top of our Moodle page under general resources to get you there, but you can search for it too. So just real quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and type in all those values. Um, so if mass of the electron, I'm just gonna remind you how to type in numbers in scientific notation in a spreadsheet, right, like Excel. So 9.1093835 is the number out of the book. And then that's gonna be times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms. So the way we do scientific notation that times 10, we use exponential notation. So E is gonna stand for our exponent. And so that's where we type in the minus 34. So that E, sorry, minus 31. So that E minus 31 means times 10 to the negative 31st power. And uh, that's in kilograms. Um, I will sometime write the unit Next to it in the neighboring cell, uh, don't put it in the same cell as your number because then it will no longer be a number. Um, Excel will think it's text. 
Uh, but if you just do everything in SI units, then maybe you don't need to label the units. But if you want to do that for completeness, never a bad idea. So um, we're going to pause the video right now, and I'm going to go in and enter the rest of these constants, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we've got all these constants typed in. I've included the unit labels, but again, that's not absolutely necessary um, if you're just doing a calculation for problem set, that kind of thing. So um, let's type in a label for our prefactor here. And so now I'm going to uh, type in this formula. So remember in Excel, to enter a formula, you always start with an equal sign, right? And so then my minus one half comes first. So minus one uh, divided by two. And then we're gonna multiply that by the mass. So we hit that asterisk key. That uh, should be shift eight there. So that's a little star above the eight key on most keyboards. And then we want to get the mass of the electron. So that's this cell right here. So I just click that cell. So I click on cell B2 and there's the mass. And then I'm gonna multiply. And this thing right here is in brackets. So I need to use a parentheses in Excel. And this is where things get a little bit dicey. So be careful with your parentheses in Excel. All right, so the first thing is Z. So in my numerator up here, uh, so Z is going to be 1 because I'm just going to treat the hydrogen atom emission spectra. And so we just have one proton in the, in the nucleus of the hydrogen atom. And so then we do E. So we click on that cell, B4 right there. And it gets squared. So E squared, that's that E squared there. And then we're going to divide. So I need the forward slash for dividing right there. And then I've got all these constants. And to make sure that they stay in the denominator, I need to put parentheses around all the terms in this denominator, all the factors. So an open parentheses, then four times. And uh, Excel has a built-in value for pi, and it's capital PI. And then it is like a function. And so you have to type a parentheses, but it doesn't take any arguments. So you don't need to do anything plugging like an X value or anything in there. So just times capital P, capital I, and then open close parentheses for that function. So there's your pi function. Then we're gonna multiply that by the epsilon naught here. That's this value right here for epsilon naught, the permittivity of free space. And then we're gonna multiply it by uh, h bar, Planck's constant divided by two pi. And that's everything in the denominator. So I close that parentheses. And that's everything inside these square brackets. So I close that parentheses. And then that whole bit gets squared so I do a caré there and raise that to the second power. So remember the caré, that's above the uh, six key on most keyboards. That's how you do powers. That's how we did that power there. All right, so that looks like everything in our prefactor. So we're going to hit enter, negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18th, and that's going to be in units of joules because that's the unit for energy. Um, and everything else should cancel out. We won't check that, but there you go. Um, and that actually agrees with what the Rydberg constant is in units of energy. All right, so now we're ready to calculate our delta E. Delta E. So now we're going to do that. So that's going to be equal to, and um, we're going to have the prefactor here. So click on that. Then we're gonna multiply by this term in parentheses. So I open my parentheses here, and then I have one divided by two squared. And then from that, I'm gonna subtract, so my minus sign, and then this fraction right here, one forward slash for dividing, and then three carry two for squared. All right, and there is my delta E. So I can just hit enter, and now I've got the value of this change in energy as the electron makes that quantum leap from three down to two. So the negative sign here is telling you that that electron is losing energy because the atom is becoming more stable. The electron is getting closer to the nucleus, plus likes minus, and so that's a more stable situation than being, than being further away from the nucleus. All right, so finally we need to calculate our wavelength using this equation up here, so lambda. And so what is that? So equal sign again, because it's a formula, it's Planck's constant times the speed of light C divided by a slash our delta E value. Now wavelengths, we're gonna want those to be, um, <clears throat> excuse me, wavelengths, we're gonna want those to be positive numbers. Um, we would get a negative sign here, but that's just telling us that um, 
the photon is being emitted. So you can think of it like a direction, but I'm just gonna go ahead and take the absolute value. We do that with an Excel function, ABS for absolute value. Then we have to enclose in parentheses the thing that we're taking the absolute value of. So I just move my cursor over here and enclose that whole formula in um, the absolute value brackets there. So now we're taking the absolute value of that result. All right, and so there is my wavelength and that's going to be in units of meters. So uh, for the visible spectrum of hydrogen, nanometer is the more common unit for wavelength. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert this into nanometers. So I'm gonna click on the equal sign there and we're gonna convert that. So I just take this and I multiply by the conversion factor and I know that there is one nanometer in every uh, 10 to the power negative nine meters. And so that's gonna cancel out our meter unit and convert our answer into units. So there's one meter for every, that's the slash 10 to the negative, sorry, one nanometer for every 10 to the negative ninth meters. Hit enter there, oops, it didn't like that reference. Oh, why doesn't it like that reference? Oh yeah, I, you see what I did here? Yeah, good, good catch here. So it doesn't know that I'm multiplying here. So right between B11 and the rest of that stuff, I need to multiply. So up here, I can edit the formula in this uh, formula bar, and I need to put that asterisk in right there so it knows that I'm multiplying. And then I could just hit the enter key or that check mark there, and there we go. So there's that number in nanometers. And you can go uh, check this against the experimental value for the um, Bohr atom, hydrogen atom emission spectrum, and you'll see that there is in fact a, a, a a line that's emitted at 656 nanometers. So we're within spinning distance of the experimental value. It's actually like 656.2. And uh, so Bohr did very well there. All right, so that's how we can do those calculations involving lots of constants using a spreadsheet. So hopefully that was helpful.